As you know, Carolyn has been sick recently. We had to take her to the emergency room a few days ago. Well, it might have even been a week and a half ago or now. And, you know, we were trying to get through the nights. Usually the nights is when she has the most troubles. So I haven't been getting a lot of sleep and is trying to come up with YouTube ideas and get all our chores done and everything. It's been a bit of a challenge and I'm not making excuses. I just want you to know that I haven't been able to think about YouTube videos quite as much. So I apologize. Now, this video, I am positive, 90% of the audience is absolutely gonna hate. I ask you though to please stick around because others are going to love it. And if you click into the video and then say, oh, I don't like this video and then click out of it, it tells the algorithm, the YouTube computer, that nobody likes this video and it won't share it with the people who do like the video. For some reason, people, my audience, does not attribute this video, these types of videos, to off-grid living. But I think it's absolutely essential that you learn how to do these things when you live off-grid. It's kind of the idea. It seems to me that people think this is a woman's job, what I'm gonna talk about today. I've been called a wussy, except take out the W, put a P in place of it, because I'm not doing it like real men do it. <laughs> Always gotta talk in that roughly voice when I'm talking like a prepper or a real man. Real man only do it this way. Well, I'm not a real man, I'm, a, I'm an off-gridder. And, you know, I guess if you wanna live off-grid, you have to give up your right to be a real man. I don't know, I feel like I have accomplished a lot more in life than real men have. I mean, I was on a, not to brag, I'm really not bragging, but I was on a submarine, I'm pretty proud of that. But real men wait until I come home from a submarine. Now, I was on a nuclear trident submarine, SSS, BN 729, now it's a SSG and they, they changed it. It was the USS Georgia. Uh, I really had a good time there. And I got an opportunity to be an engineer on a tugboat. Unfortunately, that didn't work out, but I, I decided to get out of the Navy to be an engineer on the tugboat on the Mississippi River. I don't know, I may have stayed in if that opportunity hadn't come up about it doesn't matter I'm really happy with the way my life turned out ran my own company and now I'm living off-grid and very happy so I'm not complaining but I feel like being on the submarine was a real man's job but it wasn't because when I came home a man who I respected more than anybody you can imagine he says well that's nothing like being depth charged at 100 feet in World War II when you're on a submarine and I was like yes sir you're right I mean, I, I, was, I come home to brag about my, my accomplishments. And, and one story I like to tell is uh, we was doing a, a training exercise, and I was just running my head off, getting everything done, taking control of fair water planes, and I had a hydraulic leak, and I had, I think we had to start the diesel up, so I had to get ready to snorkel. And, and just, uh, there was a million things going on, and my relief, the guy who was supposed to relieve me, I asked for help from. Well, they made him die as part of the drill simulation. So I'm running all over the place. And, and so I got a, a, an accommodation sort of like from the captain and I was really proud of that. I came home to talk about it. Well, that's nothing. Wait until you're actually discharged at 100 feet or whatever he said. Well, when he died, when that man died, I did some research into his background and he uh, turned out he wasn't even in the Navy for six months, he was a medical corpsman. I am not criticizing medical corpsmen, they were very important, but he was never on a submarine. So real men make up stories to actually challenge the people who have accomplished things, to make them feel inferior. That way, when you come home, you will never talk about your accomplishments because they, I guess, feel inferior and they don't want to hear about your great accomplishments because they're embarrassed about their life. So for those who will stick around for this video for a little while and maybe not be embarrassed about doing things that are wussy, except take out the W and put a P in place, because submarine life wasn't really a wussy life taking the W out and putting a P in. It was pretty, it was pretty neat. So today I am going to talk about canning and I would like for you to stick around for this video. Watch it all the way through. If you're not going to watch it, just let it play. Hit the thumbs up button. 
hit the subscribe button, hit and leave a comment, say, hey, you know, that looks really neat, whatever. I appreciate it. It really helps the video get out there and reach a little bit. So as you know, I've been trying to get a 100% success rate from Tadler Lids. Tadler Lids is a two-piece component. It's a rubber ring and a plastic cap. The plastic cap lasts forever. The rubber ring lasts for 10 uses. And we have a lifetime supply of these. Never will run out. But the rubber rings, even if I had to replace them, are like $9 a box. But if you think about it, there's 12 in a box that last 10 uses. That's 120 uses. It's much cheaper than metal lids. Metal lids are $3 for a dozen. I mean, you can do the math. And they're only one use. Now, some people will use them twice. I wouldn't recommend it. But if you use it twice, you really need to check for that seal. Well, the Tadler lids are tricky to use. And one of the things they say about using Tadler lids is you need to practice with them a lot. And I told you the other day in a video that I don't get an opportunity to practice with them very much. I have two canners. They each hold 10 pint jars. So we have 200 jars worth of food with Tadler lids on them. But we have a, a failure rate to them. They just don't seal. So that means you got to recan it and waste more propane and do it over again. And typically, I don't even use Tadler lids on the second round. If they fail, I just go ahead and get a metal lid. So now I'm using metal lids, which cost money. So I would like to have a 100% success rate. So the other day, I took 10 canning jars. This isn't actually a canning jar. And I filled it with water, boiling water. I boiled the water in the coffee tin here. I boiled it up poured it in the jar, put the Tadler lid on, then I put the ring on. Now, the thing about the ring is when you put the ring on, this is going to be hard to do one-handed, you're not supposed to put the ring on very tight. So you have a Tadler lid, I'm just going to use a regular lid, and then you put the ring on, like I said, it's going to be hard to do. You put two fingers there, you just kind of hold it down, and then you turn it. That's as tight as it goes. And then you put it in the canner. When it comes out of the canner, then you're supposed to tighten the lid to the appropriate tightness. Now, if the jar is bubbling inside, I leave it alone. That means it's gotten a seal on it. It's sealed already. I don't have to worry about it. So I don't tighten that ring. Under a vacuum, the boiling temperature drops. And what I've noticed, I don't know if this is scientific, but when I take those jars out, I can take my little laser thermometer and about 120 degrees is when that boiling stops under a vacuum. So, like I said, I leave those alone. I don't tighten them up. But if they come out and they're not boiling, then I go ahead and tighten that ring. Well, it occurred to me that I must be tightening them too tight because when I take the ring off, I think what it's doing is it's grabbing that Tadler lid and twisting it with it, breaking the seal. So the other day I did an experiment to see how true this is. And I don't know if my success rate was any better. So I poured that boiling water into the jar. I put a Tadler lid on it. I put the ring on just hand tight. The first time I tried it, I didn't tighten it very tight. Oh, and one other thing I did is I put lard around the Tadler lid. Just pretend this is a Tadler lid. I put lard around it. Kind of make it more slippery so when that ring comes off it doesn't twist that Tadler lid. So I didn't tighten it near as tight as I used to because I watched this video of this lady I used to watch all the time and she just barely twisted it on. She, I usually but she just barely twisted it on. So I did this experiment. Well the first time I tried it I had five jars and four of them failed. Well, that wasn't good at all. Well, then I tried it again, five jars, and I had one fail. So I got better at it. Well, Carolyn and I have decided that the test is just bad. There's something wrong with the test. Now, it should have sealed the way I did it, but there's a lot of variables that could have went into that. The lids may not have been very hot, like they are when the canner, when you put them in a canner, the lids are on it, the water's boiling, the contents inside the jar is boiling, the lid gets hot, everything's getting hot. Well, 
it may have not gotten hot enough. Well, I don't want to use the pressure canner unless I absolutely have to because that takes a lot of energy. So I just like to boil some water and then try it out because I need to do testing. I need to experiment. I need to learn how to use these tablet lids. So today I've decided that I'm going to fill the jars. So you can see that I've got my jars in here filled with water. I put the tablet lids on just with my finger sitting there and I just until the jar started twisting. Just like I showed you over here. You just put it on and when the jar starts twisting, that's tight enough. So now I'm gonna let this boil for 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll pull them out and then I'm gonna tighten like that lady did on the YouTube video. I'm just gonna give my hand to tighten. So let them sit overnight, 24 hours and see how they do, see if they seal. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to come back to you on this video, just like I promised on the last one. The last one failed, it didn't work. I'm not giving up is my point. The Tadler lids save us a ton of money. And when as HTF event ever happens, if it were to ever happen, and I always have to use a growly voice because that's how the preppers say it, as HTF, stuff hits the fan. Well, if stuff hits the fan, you're not going to be able to buy these metal lids. They're going to be, there's just nothing you can buy. So you can either have to stockpile these, and that's a large stockpile. You figure with pint jars, it takes 10. Well, there's only a dozen in a box. That's $3 for one cannerful, basically. If you have any failures, well, then you got to take those two, you know, use them up also. So if you can use Tadler lids, gonna be a massive savings now the thing about tadler lids is I've usually had a pretty good success rate with them out of 20 jars I usually have about two failures the problem is the last time I did it I had six failures and that just seemed really high to me I didn't want to have that many failures but that being said even if as HTF were to happen it's not really a huge deal I can recan them you wait overnight, if they don't seal, then you start it all back up and can them again. Now, the thing about the canners, I have two aluminum canners, they're not steel. So you gotta be very careful that when you're canning that you're not putting it over flame that's too hot. So in an SHTF, SHTF, you gotta make sure that if you put them over a fire, that it's just a small fire that will get it to, to boil in your canner. Because you can deform your canner. The other thing you can do is you can end up boiling all the water out of here. So you see there's water all the way around. Well, I think you can see. There's water all the way around all the jars. Well, you don't want those boiling out. You lose all that water. And then it's just your jar sitting on the bottom of the canner. That's the other thing I need to be careful of right here is I got these on the bottom of the canner, I don't want the jars to break, so I gotta sit here and watch these very closely. Typically, you're gonna have a little screen or something sitting at the bottom, so you're, it's not sitting directly on the pan. So again, this is just an experiment. As soon as it starts boiling, I'm gonna stop and let it cool off. But I, I wanna keep after this because it's the wussy thing to do. I think this is the, my job. I've told everybody many times that I come to live this lifestyle so I don't have to work for an employer. There's some things in, in, in your job that you just don't like to do. I haven't seen anything in this life that I'm considering my job other than making YouTube videos. YouTube videos are actually the worst part of my day. But if I have to stand in here and watch a water boil so I don't have to go work for an employer, I'm telling you that is just a big deal to me. So I'd much rather be a wussy experimenting with tattler lids than going working for an employer being a real man so I can get chewed out all day long. I'm just not interested. It was a very stressful life that way. Running my own company was stressful. Working for an employer was stressful. But here, I'm not stressed. So if you'll click this up next box, it will take you to that video where I was talking about that first experiment. So if I can inspire you to be a wussy so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.